It's time for our Windows Weekly episode 300, everybody. We've got the latest news on Surface Pro. The Outlook comes out of beta. Steve Ballmer makes some strange comments. We'll analyze. It's all ahead. Paul and Mary Jo and Windows Weekly are next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 300, recorded February 21st, 2013. All hat, no pixels. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Podio from Citrix. Manage your projects with files, instant communication, and collaboration all in one workspace. Start using Podio today absolutely free. Just visit Podio.com to sign up, set up your first workspace, then invite your team to get started. Work the way you want to with Podio.com. And by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic, continuous, unlimited backup for your computer files. Just $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com. And use the offer code WINDOWS to get two bonus months with purchase. And by... Ring Central. I love my cloud-based phone system from Ring Central. Zero startup costs and Ring Central is $20 per month per user. Try it now with a 30-day risk-free trial and when you buy one desk phone, you'll get a second phone free, up to 20 phones. Call 800-543-9980 or visit ringcentral.com and use the promo code TWIT. It's time for Windows Weekly, the 300th episode. Where's my Vuvuzela when I need it? Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, what episode number did you join us on, Mary Jo? Uh, you know, I was trying to think of that the other day. I'm not sure. Because you, you were a guest a few times, but then you became a regular a year ago. It's been here at least a year and a half. Ago. I think yeah. it was. Over, yep. Yeah. So you probably yeah, have mid. half of these 300 yeah. are yours. Some. I'm going to take <laughs> the next 100 some. off, so <laughs> <laughs> have fun. <laughs> happy, happy 300. It's hard to believe 300 episodes. Paul Therott and I have been doing this, and that makes that means since uh, roughly six years. Uh, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, it does. If I go to twit.tv slash WW1, I can find out when our first Windows Weekly was. I'm going to guess it was September 2006. Well, I bet. I'll tell you in a moment. So before Vista launched. Was it before? Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, the gravy um, days. September 28th. Very good. Yeah. It was all upside from there, Leo. 2006. Yep. Wow. Wow. That's right, because we spent a lot of time talking about the move to Vista. <laughs> I had smaller hats. You're, okay, we haven't mentioned the hat. And for those listening on audio, you can continue to disregard the hat. <laughs> yeah, it's just disregard. Please. But God, that please. is the biggest ass hat. Now, I, I bought a big hat because I went to meet Charlie Daniels, and I was told he had a very, very large hat. So I bought the biggest hat well, I could get. And it understand was, that this is actually my daughter's hat. Oh, my so God. So on, on her, this would be like a sundress, <laughs> you know? You got that in, uh, in uh, Cancun. Yep. You were in Mexico uh, over the last week. Since we talked to you last. Yep. Wow. Did you? Yeah, we left Friday morning and came back last night. Did you have fun? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> you know, my kids did. It's for I the mean, kids. You're doing it for yeah. the children. <laughs> Mary <laughs> Jo, what are you trying to... You can't... Like there's nothing you can do, Mary Jo, to get rid of that hat. It's just going to be there. I was trying to wipe the hat away. It wouldn't work. No, no I'm afraid not. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hey, that's even better. Now, it's, uh, now it looks like it's uh, your chair. Oh, that feels Did better. you go to Senior Frogs? No, <laughs> but it is there. Oh, it's there. It's everywhere in Mexico. <laughs> Very joking. No. It says, oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, this has been an interesting week, and I guess a little later on I will ask Paul when Mary Jo's not listening about what you thought about the PlayStation 4 announcement yesterday. And just before we went on, Google announced the Google Pixel Chromebook. Yep. I know. Which we thought was, you know, I... Uh, we. We played that video uh, two weeks ago on Twit, and uh, and I said, you know, I don't know if this is true or not. Here's a, then, the, then last week on Twit, we said, you know, it's not true. This company is very sketch and shady. This yeah. is not. And then today, Google announces it. It was true. 
and it's crazy. I, if I'm understanding the math on this correctly, you're paying about two hundred and fifty dollars for the Chromebook, and about eleven $1 hundred dollars for the screen. Because it is a crazy expensive web-only device. Thir uh, the 32-bit version, 32 gig version, is twelve hundred ninety-nine dollars, thirteen hundred dollars. Crazy. If you want LTE and 64 gigs, fourteen hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> that's so not con uh, consonant with the current prices. Of, I mean, that's more than a MacBook Air, which is a real computer. How much does a web browser cost? Can you remind me. <laughs> Free. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, I know nice. I am baffled. Yeah. It's <laughs> um, it makes sense when it's like a $200 piece of hardware, right? The yeah. Time. But here's the other thing. So obviously there's a market for machines that cost that much. Apple sells tons yeah. of MacBook Airs, et cetera. I think Pat that Carbon is, But they're that beautiful much. looking. Right. And they run a full operating system. They have onboard storage. This this new thing is it's it's weird in that it is incredibly ugly. You know, it's not it's like it's industrial boxy. looking. It's it boxy. looks like something that a kid would make in a high school metal class. Like it's not it's a <laughs> fake laptop that they hammered out of metal sheets. You know, it it really has a weird look to it. Battery life. Do we know? I can't find anything that says battery life. I've been looking around. I mean, it would have to be twenty five hours. <laughs> so, it's probably closer to 25 minutes, but yeah, we'll I see. mean, seriously, it, but it's not yeah. going to be that much because it's, it's such a huge uh, all month battery. That's what it should be. All month, it should go forever, and you should yeah. get a you should get you know t uh, unlimited online storage. And I mean, it just <laughs> for that price, it seems like they it's should crazy. offer you crazy. something. Yeah. Clearly, those screens, and I don't understand. You know, this is the new escalation. Remember the good old days? It was always megahertz. Right, megahertz were the big thing. Um, now we've we've gone through years and years where the speed of the computer almost doesn't matter. Almost, I mean, obviously, atom type machines are an issue and so forth. But you know, mainstream PCs, that's no longer an issue. Megapixels are the new megahertz. Yeah, it's the pixels now. Like these Retina displays, like uh, Apple kicked off this new Cold War, whatever it is, with the Retina. It's like we're. It's crazy how focused people are. On so, this, I just this I just did this by the way. Four point three megapixels, twelve point eight five inch screen, but in this weird three two format. Yeah, it looks square basically. It's yeah. It's like the old, you know, like laptops used to look like you know ten years ago. Should I buy one of these and just just to, just to have the the you know have it? I, it's available. I'm telling. I, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I this is not a. Uh, you 25, can make a case 60 for, by seventeen hundred. It's two hundred thirty nine pixels. Right there. Battery up to five hours. Five hours. Yeah. Up to. It's an i5 with integrated uh, HD uh, 4000 It's like $300 an hour. You know? <laughs> That's what you're paying right there. Uh, you do get a terabyte of cloud storage for three years and mm -hmm. 12 free GoGo -Go in-flight internet sessions. There you go. There you go. GoGo. -Go. It's Gorilla Glass, backlit Chrome keyboard, HD webcam, two USB 2... It's mm -hmm. not even Ivy Bridge. It's a Core i5 processor, which is interesting. It must need that to drive the, the resolution. Yeah, it's about, it's not even the processor. It's about the uh, about the graphics card. And I don't know how snappy that's going to be with a HD 4000 graphics. Very odd. It's basically the Surface Pro. Four gigs of RAM, 32 gig solid state drive. It's the Surface Pro if you didn't have an operating system and just had Chrome on it. Yep. <laughs> Which is, which is, that's really, the, I've always had the, the question, is that really anything anybody wants? Is, and, and a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, no, we do want this. Okay. Now how, now how much know. would you, you pay? Know, I, I'm not, I, look, I'm certainly old-fashioned in some ways by this point, but every time I've picked up a Chromebook, I've had this, and I have one, I, I, I have the same response because they'll come out with updates. Like you can see in that screenshot, this is the new version of Chrome OS where it has like a Windows 7 style taskbar and everything. So I remember when that update came out, I... You know, I turned it back on, dusted it off, downloaded the update. And I have that same feeling every time. It's just, it's so confining. It's a tease. You know, yeah. It, it's, yeah, yeah, you think like, hey, I could do this, I could do this. And, you know, no. No. Where's Although this? this is the debate, you know, we had with Mary Jo where uh, Windows RT is kind of the same thing, right? Where yeah. I feel like for a lot of people, you're going to hit that wall. Right. You want a browser, you know, in the case of RT, you might want like a browser uh, plug-in or a desktop app or whatever. And the Chrome is like that, you know.
um, Chrome OS rather, where like I love running Chrome in Windows, you know, because I can do other stuff. Yeah. yeah. And can I point out that Google is not famous for its support. <laughs> so, so now you're yeah. buying a laptop from a company that uses Python scripts for support. Actually, Leo, that's not fair because you can search for everything you need. Um, <laughs> Just Google it. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> when my wife bought her first Android phone, that's literally what the Verizon people told her. She said, is there some kind of a, a book? It's and the guy said, no, you just, you just Google if anything you need. You know, it's all out there. She says, what if I need to know how to get online? <laughs> <laughs> you can mail, yeah. you know, I think Google has a mail interface, a snail mail interface. You send them a postcard okay. with your query. In it. <laughs> I hope that's true, by the way. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Amit says, uh, you guys, you're forgetting. It's touch enabled. Yep, no, that sells it. That, there you go. That, to me, is the thing that makes it the least interesting or attractive. Isn't that what... A, tra a traditional it, laptop with touch. Isn't that what Microsoft learned is that you can enable touch, but if you don't have an operating system that, where it's deeply integrated, there's no, it doesn't do you any good. Oh, we have that, Leo. It's called Windows 7. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know? awesome. I'm still running yeah. it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a touch OS. You know, well, in other look, words, look, Windows, I'm sitting Windows in front 7 of, has touch. Yeah, no, I'm sitting in front of a... Um, a, this is the uh, HP Compaq, mm -hmm. you know, convertible, t uh, st you know, it has a stylus, but it's running XP, and the touch thing is just like a thin layer on top of XP, and so it just doesn't, you know, one OneNote was great on that. It's a one note. Listen, machine. anyone who has tried to use the desktop with any touch enabled Windows machine has had this experience. I just did this when I was in Cancun, actually, where you're trying to hit like a thing, whatever it is, on the screen, and you're like, no, seriously. <laughs> Come on. No, no okay. seriously. No, I'm like, touching you. You're, I'm touching you're you. You're literally physically hitting the exact right area, and the screen makes a little impression <laughs> yeah, like it's done you, something. You actually dent. You dent yeah. the screen. <laughs> it still yeah, doesn't yeah. respond. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. But listen, welcome to that world, Chrome, Chrome yeah. OS users. You're going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. As a, as a Microsoft guy, you know. You know the world of The her. web comes alive when you can touch it, Leo. <laughs> it comes alive. Stop touching me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I was saying IAS earlier. You know, it's nothing like spending fifteen hundred bucks on a, a display, and then you, you want me to touch this thing? What are you crazy? It's like it's like a piece of fine art. Why would I want to touch this? I want to put it in something protective, and never touch it again. You know, unbelievable. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Oh well, I uh, just you know, uh, like with the Google Q, we're just left scratching our heads, saying I don't know what they're thinking here. <laughs> Yes, yes. All right. Now, there is good news from Microsoft. We're going to talk about Outlook, some Windows uh, Blue news. Maybe it hit a milestone this week. We'll get a, an update on Surface Pro, Skype, mm -hmm. and a whole lot more. Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com is here. Paul Thoreau from the Supersite for Windows, winsupersite.com. And you're watching Windows Weekly, our show today, brought to you by the folks at Citrix who have done it again. They've really become adept at... Um, creating new products to help you in your work. And this is called Podio. And we started using this. Actually, I was shown Podio uh, right after Citrix acquired it. And I signed up for an account. So I've had an account for quite some time. Um, the idea behind Podio, and by the way, it's absolutely free. You could try this absolutely free. Actually, try or use, whatever. It's free. The idea behind this is that you've got bits and pieces of your work scattered all over an email in SkyDrive, office google docs just all over the place podio unifies it brings it all together in one workspace along with your team so that you can all work together you create a workspace to fit the way you work and uh, you invite your team to join in fact you can do that right now absolutely free just go to podio.com i'm going to log into my Podio account. I've invited my team. You've got the activity stream, which is kind of like Twitter for work, kind of like Yammer or, or something like that, except I really like it. And it integrates in all the tasks. There's great new real time collaboration environments involved with this as well. Of course, it's from Citrix. W wouldn't it be wouldn't wouldn't it be live? Wouldn't it be a real time enabled? You just got to try this. And it, again, I got to underscore this. It doesn't cost you a penny. It's free. It's not a free trial. It's free. Sign up. 
Set up your first workspace, invite your team, and then see what you could do with Podio. P-O-D-I-O dot com. Start using Podio today. It's free. Visit Podio.com, sign up, set up your first workspace, and invite your team to get started. Work the way you want to with Podio.com. We use it to manage our sales teams. We use it uh, for projects. The next time we do a live event like CES, Podio will be all over it. It's really fabulous. All right, IESEoutlook.com uh, has gone out of beta. It is now an official product. But what does that mean? I mean, anybody has been able to use it for some time, right? It's just it's just like an acknowledgement we're out of beta. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's because it's not it's not a change in how it operates or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, okay. The, the new piece Sorry. was they're mm -hmm. moving. They announced they're moving everyone who has a Hotmail account to Outlook.com. Oh, it's time. It's time. Outlook is gone. Uh, Hotmail. Yeah. Um, Hotmail, Hotmail, I mean, sorry. Outlook yeah. is here. Hotmail is gone. <laughs> Outlook is here. Hotmail Outlook's here. Is gone. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's here. <laughs> That's okay. It's here. Um, yeah, so, but but when you look at what this is really, um, it's basically Microsoft saying we're going to change your look and feel of Hotmail. It's all Metro. To what Outlook is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Or modern, well, not, all, all, not all of it, Leo. That's the problem. It's modern UI. Yeah, not all of it. Not all yeah. of it? So click, click on, on calendar. the calendar and see what happens. Okay, okay, calendar. <laughs> this is fun because it's like going back in time to when we started doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Loading. Yeah, literally. Welcome to the Hotmail calendar. Wait a minute. What are they talking about? Oh, that looks just like Hotmail. Yeah. Yeah, ancient Hotmail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We found new birthdays in your contact list. They should show up soon. You can see I've not used it. Uh, is well, that you're not why, alone, Leo. <laughs> why, why is it that they uh, didn't metrofy this? And why does it still say Hotmail here? Let me click well, my Hotmail said, inbox. Is it going to take me to how Hotmail? Many months, how many months have they been saying it's real soon now? Um, since uh, last since summer, Since last I think. June, July, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It also um, brings me to mail.live.com. So they still haven't even yeah. phased that out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about the URL stuff too much. I mean, obviously, oh, I this is designed that, to be a, a replacement. So right. it's hotmail.com, mail.live.com, outlook.com. I mean, these things all, you know, same, all resolving to the same places. Microsoft Sorry, personal data dashboard. So I click the settings on my, because I'm getting ads because I haven't paid for, actually, I have, wait a minute. Didn't I, I bought Office. Doesn't that give me a paid for outlook.com? No. No. No, because the Office 365 Home Premium uh, it doesn't include, yeah, it's not, that's not so part of it. So I have to it. pay more for that. And yes. we, we yeah, should if you also to, note, Outlook, Outlook is not Outlook.com, just to keep things even more confusing. Yeah, so Outlook.com is the website, <laughs> and you know. it is the new Hotmail slash Live Mail. Outlook desktop is Outlook. It's always yeah. still Outlook. Year, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, uh, but years ago... Microsoft had something they called the Outlook Web App. Yeah, the Outlook Web Web. Yeah, yeah, Web Access. Which they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. They changed yeah. the name to Outlook Web Access. I yeah, a lot of companies use that. that so, now they have Word Web App, right? Uh, you know, Excel Web App, etc. But that's um, not what Outlook.com is. is not <laughs> these things. It's yeah, it's very confusing. It's one of those things. I, you know, Microsoft is reusing names like they did with Surface and. Well, uh, it makes sense to call it in the world. I think that's well. No, I mean Outlook is the you know the name that people associate with Microsoft email. Uh, you know, okay. Um, but Outlook.com is a tough name, I, I would say for something. You know, in other words, we we never refer to Gmail.com. We call it Gmail. You know, right? It's it's tough from a branding perspective because we have to continually be explicit about which one we're talking about. Okay, so it's out of beta. One of the things they said, and I thought this was interesting, that uh, they have, what was it, 60 million users? Although, actually, I meant to ask Mary Jo about this beforehand. Um, 60 million since, I guess, the preview went live. They didn't specify, at least not to me, how many of those were existing Hotmail users who just switched to the Outlook.com interface and how many were new like us. people signing. Yeah, uh, right. Because I use my Hotmail address through Outlook.com. Right. I assume I'm included in that list of 60 million. And then I guess since the announcement of this um, service leaving preview mode, they said that 1.5 million new users had joined in the first 24 hours since that occurred. 
I guess. And those presumably, because they say it, are, are new users, not Hotmail users making the switch. I, I thought it was Hotmail users making the switch, actually. The 60? Oh, you did? Or the 1.5? Uh, the 1.5. The 1.5. New I, people signed up this last 24 Oh, you're taking it to mean that, in other words, we've moved the first 1.5 million over. Right. And, or people got an email and said, oh. it said, hey, we're cl we're closing Hotmail. You should upgrade. Right. And they clicked gotcha. on something. What is the time frame I, for... Uh, it, closing's not the right word. It's really more no. like redesigning, rebranding. It's just, is it, it is. Is it the Hotmail server in the background, or are they moving everybody to an exchange? <laughs> it's literally like a free BSD server, right? <laughs> No, it was. <laughs> when they bought Hotmail, they converted it over to yeah. IS, but it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, but, yeah it's not Ma but Hotmail is its own protocol. It's not IMAP or POP. It's something else and, or Exchange. Well, I'm wondering yeah. if they're, so, they're going to move that over. Yeah, it's the same. It is the same as Hotmail. So okay. Hotmail supports its own proprietary weirdness, but right. in, in more recent years, they've supported Exchange ActiveSync. So that is how you would yes. typically okay. configure a, a client, yeah. It's own proprietary have, weirdness. Have, I like that. That's a good term. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it required weird software, even on Microsoft stuff. You know, right. to use Hotmail on older versions of Outlook, you needed the special connector software because you had That's to right. bridge right. that those two worlds, you know. They also yeah, so, said that half of the 60 million were Gmail refugees. I thought that was interesting. Oh, you know that. Okay, so that is that is somewhere then. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. Yeah, I okay. saw that somewhere too. Um, I'm trying to think. Where I don't know how they know that. <laughs> uh, unless they're porting their Gmail account over in some way. Um, and I think that this, this is tied to Scroogled, right? Like uh, they're saying, look, see, all these people don't want their uh, their sure. email search for ads. And for it is perhaps not coincidental that they started up Scroogled <clears throat> just as the right. service was going live, if, if you will. I'm not really clear that anything has changed other than the fact that these kind of announced, hey, we're, you know, we're going live with it. I mean... Um, on the day that I talked to them about this service the first time, last June or July, whenever that was, I remember I, I was talking, I was asked Brian Hall, what's going on with Calendar? And uh, he said, you know, we're going to get to that, obviously. Um, we find that most people who access Calendar do it from a device anyway, so they'll never see the web interface. So it's less of a priority. And I thought that was fine for June, July, you know. But I mean, I asked them about Calendar because people ask me this all the time, email and Twitter what's going on with the calendar. And I've asked them five, six times uh, as recently as last week, actually uh, coincidental to this. I didn't know this was happening. You know, what's up with calendar? And it's, it's always been the same answer. We don't have anything to say. We'll let you know when we do, you know, <laughs> and then they, you know, they, went they told somebody who they talked to this week that it was going to be very soon. Like, I think they got a very out of them. <laughs> so, but why wouldn't you just wait for that? I, I, I It's so strange. I know. Uh, you know? One person I know um, said to me they think the reason calendar is taking so long is the team that's dedicated to calendar is really small compared to the other parts of this team. But I don't know. Sure. Uh, There's only two of us. Give us a break. Exactly. Give us two and people. We're a only break. three feet tall. <laughs> uh, I mean, seriously, all they basically need is a web designer. You just CSS. have to rewrite the CSS. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I don't like, know. just make I it bet look we like we get a volunteer from the chat room to do it. Here's. I, <laughs> Here's the it's ad. not hard to imagine what this might look like. Here's you the know? ad uh, for uh, Microsoft's running for Outlook.com. Get going is the tagline. Guy in a SUV. Oh, my God. He just rolled it. He's By the way, it's always a good idea to show a car crash in a promotional video for your product. It makes me want to use it. <laughs> and that's Matt Berg, delivery man, now stunt man. And, and there's hip hop music and cooking, and woman, so it's like a car crash, a woman um, with a knife. Now, yeah, maybe no, it's all intentional. They, a drill. They don't do this by and, accident. And the guy is, from Saw. Yeah, this is to get you. <laughs> this is to make you feel funny in your um, butt. And that's a guy using a pixel. Get, <coughs> get sharing. Ryan. How for the grand finale? Hovercraft. <laughs> The guy has built a hovercraft in his garage, and he's the typical Outlook user. <laughs> and then his friend says, what the... Let's you share, organize, and stay up to date. Like and his friend calls it an airstrike. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's email, learned too much. Email gets you going. So the, the premise is if you, uh, if you use email, you could become a stuntman, a master chef, or build a hovercraft in your garage. 
I pointed out to today or yesterday that uh, uh, Microsoft is advertising on YouTube. And yeah, they're this advertising. Is on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, you saw that ad there. So, well, yeah, well, this is on um, their um, MSFT Outlook account on YouTube. Right. But if you go to YouTube.com, that ad is actually at the top of YouTube. Ah, uh, oh, interesting. So I thought that was kind of interesting because uh, the way that they're advertising it on YouTube is that one of the features of Outlook.com is that if someone sends you the URL for a YouTube video, you don't need to go to YouTube because it will play the YouTube video right inside of <laughs> Outlook.com. And somebody on somebody on Twitter, I wish I could remember who it was. I'm sorry, made the uh, interesting point that um, who who shares YouTube videos on email? Email. Oh yeah, <laughs> like I email videos know. all that. You know who does? Old people. Yeah. yeah. Old people. Which is kind of the running gag about Hotmail. You know, yeah. I don't know if you guys watched the league, but there was a great joke about Hotmail in there where they described uh, uh, <laughs> Hotmail as the. Email, I believe it was the email service for old people and terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's a commercial. They could, they could use that for an ad. <laughs> but it is, okay, I'm going to, okay, now that we've had our fun, mm. uh, I do think it's oh, an Oh, by the way, I, li I do like and use, I, I actually use Outlook. Absolutely. Outlook, so. And I think it's very yeah. interesting to embed live stuff. Not just, You start with YouTube, but... You might have tweets and other stuff kind of in it. This is what Twitter's doing, right? So if you go to Twitter.com and you've and mm -hmm. you've tweeted a picture, the picture's in line. So this is an interesting way of uh, now. Didn't doesn't Gmail do that any already? I mean, uh, I would think yeah, it's YouTube, right? Yeah, of course right? they must. They, they must. must do that. I, I the thing is though, you know, th there's a case to be made that people who use the desktop Outlook client live in it. You right. know that there is a certain class of user, uh, IT pros or information workers or whatever who um, through some kind of weird Stockholm syndrome like really like Outlook for some reason <laughs> and uh, are in it like all day long and it's because I think their whole life is right there in front of them right it, every interaction that they're having occurs in there and for whatever it's worth it's getting better all the time in the sense that you know now Skype is integrated and link and they can start phone calls from a place that makes sense because that's where the person's phone number would be and you know, it, it, it makes a certain amount of sense, but I'm not really sure that this is how it works for web-based email, you know, and I, w and I have no data to support this contention, but I suspect that most people access these email accounts from other things, right. devices, uh, email clients mobile, on PCs. Mobile, so mostly, right? Isn't that how we do I would everything think so. I would think so. Mobile. I think so. Yeah. Mobile, mobile. I happen, by the way, th th now that I've said that, and I am an old guy, so I'm, I fit really nicely into this segment. Um, I do, in fact, use the web <laughs> interface for Outlook.com, and I like it a lot. But I don't know. It, 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 as you tack on stuff to it, it sort of makes me think. It's not really clear how many people really need that stuff. You, you use it. I mean, me. Your, I need it. Clearly. On your Windows phone, does it look kind of the same? Does it have its own unique? No, because on Windows phone, it has a single email app, and you just integrate right. it That's in there, and it, yeah. they all look and work the same, basically, the same. aside yeah. from a few you know unique features. But... Now I got an email <clears throat> from in my Outlook uh, inbox. <laughs> okay. Amazing, amazing. Let's look at it. Is there a YouTube video link to it? <laughs> no, but there is a there is a suggestion that I might want to use Skype. The funny okay. thing yeah. is, <clears throat> I've already tied my Skype account to my Microsoft account. And that's not actually a suggestion, that's extortion. You are going to be using Skype, so <laughs> <laughs> Keep chatting with all your messenger contacts. <laughs> if you yeah. if you ever want to see your messenger yeah, exactly. contacts alive, <laughs> exactly. you will upgrade to make you to an Skype. offer you can't refuse. <laughs> Starting April eighth, we're going to do it, whether you want to or not. Yep. Uh, this is a bit. Later I call this. March I call this one Skypeled. <laughs> Skypeled. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in in the interest of fairness, I thought that the people who didn't like the <clears throat> screw screw thing would appreciate my word Skypeled. Now, why, I wonder, you know, so I'm looking at my ads, the ads that I get on uh, my Outlook, and, of course, uh, they're not targeted because, uh, as we know... You'll notice they're terrible. And it's Microsoft because doesn't not read my mail. mail. So, and you can as tell a result, not reading it. I've got an ad for a sanding belt. Which is the type of thing one might use if they were torturing someone. They were trying to force <laughs> to use... I don't have the which tool that the belt goes on, but, they, but they're offering me the belt. Uh, Under Armour uh, Warp Speed T-shirts. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, to me, this is not. And then Duravent Stainless Steel. They think I'm a home improvement guy. 
too you big. can go to a restaurant where the, the big. placemat is made out of paper and it's all ads for local stuff. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is an ad for VentingDirect.com where they're going to sell me stainless steel ducting. Yep. I am really not. They must think I'm a handyman. <laughs> who wears awesome. underwear. I don't know what they think. Uh, is this, this is, based this was on anything? By, a by monkey the way, throwing stuff at a wall. This, <laughs> this DuraVent stainless steel tubing is $1,100. I am oh. not going to buy $1,100 worth of tubing. It must be made out of that retina displaced <laughs> material. <laughs> it's high res tubing. it's called, the, uh, the pixel display. Oh, I, to me, I'd rather have a targeted ad, <laughs> I guess. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here's something. What the hell? <laughs> I don't even know what this is. <laughs> what is a Festool sander? What the hell? Festool <laughs> sander row 125 FEC edge protector. And that's a picture of it. Oh, yeah, From McFeely's. What the hell? I don't even know what that is. Is it for a horse? <laughs> it's only $11. Maybe I'll just buy it. I buy it from McFeely's Seed and Baggage what Company. What is that? So, in a way, I'd almost I'd rather have... Uh, oh, here's a trowel. Actually, you know what you'd rather a pocket, have? A pocket trowel. You'd rather have no ads. Yeah, this well, is I a, would rather have Making no a ads. compelling case for Hotmail Plus or whatever they're calling it. Well, they're not days. making any money off of me. That's for sure. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, those kind of ads, I mean... I think this is almost humorous. Yeah. I've never. You know what's funny, though, is they've probably been this way all along. I just never noticed because I never look at them. Right. So, yeah. another problem. And to be fair, if you access this from your Windows phone or... You won't see that. You know, the mail app or whatever. You would never, right. you'd never see it. Obviously, there's no ads This is because I have no brand. I went to my dashboard. They have a new thing now. You can go to your, your uh, ad dashboard, and you can see what your brand preferences are, and apparently I have none. So this is the <laughs> default. If you don't. We've determined that you live in Omaha, <laughs> are a farmer. I have no idea. And you drive a pickup truck. <clears throat> Here are some ads for you. Oh, this goes with the power sanding belt. Dr. Mom says... It's to protect the edges of something you're power sanding. I learn something every day on this podcast, Leo. Fascinating. Uh, so do you think, uh, so 30 million Google users, Gmail users have fled Outlook.com. They're saying a third. I just looked oh, it up. Oh, a third. Um, 20 yeah, million. So that, 20 million, but That's still. That's a lot. That is a That's lot. That's pretty good. That's pretty I, good. I wonder where they get the number. I know. It's a Microsoft stat with no explanation how we know <laughs> which is way better than just no explanation so yeah at least as a stat <laughs> so there google and by the way i, I say i feel like i'm dumping on outlook.com i just want to reinforce the notion that it's good outlook.com is actually a really it's good, good service i, no, I really like it i would say literally do use it yep yeah, yeah. In fact, it the looks, chat room same it thing. looks nice it, yeah, it's, it's really nice. it's very nice yep it's prettier than uh than gmail gmail is a little uh fiddly lots of details and stuff outlook's yeah. cleaner yep um i don't i don't use it so i don't i mean i have an account but i don't use and it i do i do pay for the pro the plus version i guess you'd call it does it does so it have good spam filtering and all that yep uh, it, yeah actually uh, that's one of the things and i you know every morning when i get up as as anyone here probably does the part of the routine is you know at some point you check your email and i have a, a the two email accounts that i go through outlook.com which funnels all of my personal accounts through and then I have a work email, which I believe is still on Exchange 2010. But my company apparently does, I don't know what the opposite of like uh, spam filtering is. It's like they're collecting spam and then they're sending it to me. So it's no, it, I mean, it's like, there's like, there's like literally no spam filtering. And it's, it, I, I'd say it was humorous, except that it, oh, it's it horrible. takes up a lot of my time every day. So what? when I go to outlook.com in the morning, there's no spam. It's so much nicer. And right? when I go to my work email, it's like spam, 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 yeah. spam. I, I have to really look at it because. Obviously, buried in there are actual no, it's, emails. No, it's one of the things. Spam, remember, we used to talk a lot about spam. We don't talk about it much anymore. And it's not because spam has lessened in, in, to any degree. Yeah. But because oh, I spam, talk about it every morning because I see it well, all the time. you now are getting it. But, but spam filtering has gotten so good, and almost everybody has it. It's, we're not even aware of it. Right. And, it, and right. you only become aware of it when you go to an account where there is no spam filtering, and you go, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or you could do this. You know, you could go to your – there's a spam folder, Right. And I, I just, I looked at my, in fact, just this morning, I looked at my Yahoo account for the first time in apparently 16 months. But 
I, there was no email in the inbox at all, but there was a spam folder, which I looked at. And they're doing a good job, I have to say, because <laughs> some of the stuff in there was crazy. But you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't get yeah. I don't get spam anymore in any of my accounts because um, everybody's, I think, kind of figured out how to that's, do it. Well. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've, they've mastered. We have mastered anti-spam. Uh, so uh, the rumors on Blue continue to fly fast and furious. Last week we were talking about Windows Blue, and it turns out it's more than we thought it was. Mm -hmm. More than just a service pack. Um, yes. And now there's a new rumor that we've hit Milestone 1. Yes, another yet another rumor. Um, it's, been, it's been really interesting to see how many of these rumors are are percolating right now around blue because remember with with uh windows 8 it was pretty tough to get any kind of leaks and suddenly this week there have been two screenshot leaks that people say are the first screenshots coming out of windows blue and um a source of mine said that the the reason these screenshots came out was because they hit milestone one and milestone one's the internal first milestone major milestone when they're building windows um, in the past, there used to be three milestones for Windows, and then you'd start having, like, the private preview builds and the developer builds, consumer preview. Uh, but I think with Windows Blue, you're probably going to just, based on what I'm hearing so far, two, maybe two internal milestone builds, and then I'm not clear if there'll be any developer preview, consumer preview, or if they'll just say, okay, guys, here it is. Here's Blue. Um, last, the last, um, date that I've heard, and I haven't heard anything new to counteract this is that Microsoft's trying to get it completed and release it to the web by August or September of wow. this year. Well, that's soon. That's soon. <laughs> yeah. Is that no, on, uh, is that in target? If they're in milestone one, is, are they on target to do that? Yeah. Supposedly if this is milestone one, they're on target if there are only two milestones. So, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. They could be they could be getting ready to issue Windows Blue this year. And and like you just said, Leo, there's more than just Windows Blue, though. There's also Windows Phone Blue, we know, because there was a leaked Microsoft job posting this week uh, over the weekend, just confirming that as well, uh, that there's okay. Windows Phone Blue. And from uh, on that one, from what I've heard, that's not exactly um, on, along the same development path as Windows Blue. It's a little bit behind. Okay. So I'm not clear if we'll see Windows Phone Blue this year or next year. So the Still. milestone's meaningless for the phone version of Blue, just right. for the desktop. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's kind of exciting. It's like, wow, Microsoft actually might start delivering operating system updates like every year instead of every three years. Uh, yeah, so when, so they'd have to do it by September if they wanted to match uh, to make mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's interesting. Yeah, especially, you know, there, there were some early leaks, too, saying that um, one of the things that you could do with Windows Blue was um, run it on different size hardware, like maybe a mini Surface or a mini Windows 8 tablet, um, and that it would be optimized for that kind of a 7 or 8 inch form factor. So if that's true, you have to think, okay, who's going to be coming out with new hardware form factors and what timing? You'd think it would probably be fall in time for the holiday, uh, right? Surface so, mini this fall. Maybe. Who knows? I like it. That'd be cool. I'll buy it. <laughs> uh, Surface Pros kind of back in uh, on the shelves, I guess. Yeah, Staples has them. This is the 128 gig version. They never sold out of the 64 gig, right? Right. Nobody wants a 64 gig. <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, that's, that's the consolation never, prize. Yeah, that's what you get if you you can't. Yeah, wait. actually, as Mary Jo was talking about Blue, I just checked the Microsoft Store. I've been curious about this because. Starting last Saturday, they listed the 120, 128 gig version for sale with delivery by March 1st. You know, so they, right. they're basically, Microsoft is not really set up to do reservations. It's not how their system works in, uh, internally, apparently, but they made this exception for this one because there's been so much demand. And as of today, that thing is still March available 1st. for shipment. I, so. It looks like they've caught up, right. <laughs> I guess, you know, for whatever demand there is. Um, so we'll see. But, yeah, I had gotten some emails from people who have now seen the 128 gig. I can't I don't know why I can't say that. 128 gig version at Staples. Um, so you might want to well. check uh, brick and mortar retail 
before you order yeah. online. But you, yeah. you'll at least get it in a couple of weeks if you order it online. I also, I told, I think I told the story a couple of weeks ago when this started that a friend of mine independently decided he was going to buy this and was very frustrated. And we had gone to dinner and he was saying, I, you know, I don't understand why these guys won't take my money. And now, of course, <laughs> the second even, weekend. You couldn't, even, you couldn't even click the radio button last yeah. a couple of weeks ago. So he ordered it on Saturday and he told me today that uh, <laughs> the type keyboard and he got some kind of video adapter uh, both arrived <laughs> uh, without the device. That's a and tease. That he, <laughs> yeah, he says, he's like, what is, he's like, what is wrong with this freaking company? And I'm like, dude. Uh, <laughs> they can make the keyboards. <laughs> but now the type keyboard it. for the Pro is the same as the one for the RT, right? So yeah. they've had plenty of time. I wish they had some colors. It's a shame. It's they said only. they are going to at some point. Yeah. They've, yeah, they've yeah. definitely said that. And and you, would you use the touch on uh, Windows Pro? You like the touch, Mary Jo. I don't. I ended up not liking it. I liked oh. it at first. And then once I tried the type, I'm like, what Type's am I doing with better. the touch? Type's a real yeah. keyboard. I did the it same is. thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. would you recommend Microsoft Complete, which is uh, uh, extended warranty, 99 bucks? I think it sounds like a really good deal because it covers, it even covers yeah. like accidental spills and, and things like that, or you drop it and you actually do end up breaking it, which it seems really hard to do, but some people have done it. It covers all that. Right. No, I don't. Yeah, unlike don't the need, Apple stuff, you know. I don't need to buy an extra power. This is an extra power supply. It comes with actually, power supply, doesn't it? <laughs> so two, two <laughs> points. Uh, uh, my power supply died on this trip. What? Oh, dear. Yeah, I, I oh. plugged it in in Mexico and uh, oh, well, that's your charged problem. the surface. Well, no, nothing happened. It just oh. it, didn't work and so i i brought a surface rt with me and that power supply does work with the service pro it's, it's just slower and it's smaller um and so I'm, i was okay there but yeah i checked it when i got home it's it's it, it's dead so wow. i guess that's the end of that and i've heard from some people uh, on the rt side as well uh, that this apparently is a a fairly common uh, occurrence in the sense that if three or four people write me about this um this is clearly happening to people out in the world. So I, I've never gone on a trip with a laptop and ever worried about the power supply, right? Like I've never thought, you know, maybe I should bring two of these right? because you never know, <laughs> you know? Right. And uh, having one die like me, I just, I was lucky. I just, I mean, I, I don't think most people are going to have an RT, a Surface RT and a Surface Pro. So it's a slightly unusual occurrence. By but the way, this is uh, 50 bucks more than a Chromebook Pixel. And I got the type cover. I got the Microsoft Complete. I got an extra power supply and a padded nylon sleeve. So sure. So there. Yeah. And it's also widescreen. Yeah, it's a full operating system. Sure. Should I throw in the Xbox as well? Apparently, they think I would like one. <laughs> it's here today. I want to hold off on that. You know, there's a new one coming, Leo. Yeah. yeah. So I hear. <laughs> so I hear. But All Paul, right. Paul, go back to Staples for a sec. So, you're, are you saying some? <laughs> Please go back stores? to Staples. I've, I've heard go from back two to people. Staples. <laughs> so Staples some was the you know the redheaded stepchild of this whole situation right. for some reason. Yeah. Sixty four gig only. They weren't talking. Um, I'll, I'll I'll try to fish them out for you. I've got, I've heard from people who've said they actually have seen them there. Oh, wow. uh, interesting. Yeah. Because I I heard they had a floor model at Staples of 120, 128 gig, but that. They weren't actually. Oh, maybe in the that's store. what they saw. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look. I yeah. These Four both. Model. These yeah. both are from today. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I know this week, this past week, um, has been the MVP uh, summit in Seattle. So they, they were like thousands of Microsoft most valuable professionals in town, and they were trying to buy Surface Pros um, at the Microsoft stores in Bellevue, um, some some at the University Village store in Seattle, and they kept tweeting, "Sold out! It's sold out." They got them. They get them in, and then five minutes later, sold out. But we don't know how many are getting into these stores. You know, we still don't know that. Like, is it five? Is it five hundred? The, the one thing I had heard was that the volume of units that they had for this second wave of sales, the first wave being that initial launch weekend, was much bigger than the first wave, and that. Uh, and I, I in fact, I, I think I heard this last week before I went away that. It was then going to be a shortage <laughs> again, oh. and then they would just sort of come back. And it, that sort of played out in the sense that on Saturday, the Surface Team blogged that once these are sold out, whatever this allotment is they have, is going to be. They, they actually did come out and publicly state that in, on the blog, uh, which I've not looked at since. But um, I find it interesting and maybe pertinent that you can still order this right now on the Thursday after the fact. And... Uh, have it pot, you know, potentially shipped by the first. So, 
I would say, aside from the MVPs showing up in the same place at the same time, which is like that bizarre microclimate you get like when you go to tech ed and everyone has a Windows phone right. and it's like this beautiful alternate <laughs> reality. Um, you know, that's obviously not a, a normal occurrence. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, time to play uh, uh, this edition of our brand new game show. What the heck did Steve Ballmer mean? <laughs> yes. Let's, <laughs> let's bring up the quote from Steve Ballmer. And he said something like, Surface is a real business, but will not dominate volume in the PC market. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> time to parse Steve Ballmer. Well, I, this has been, it seems like every time anyone from Microsoft opens their mouths, they are misconstrued in some way. Yes, right? that's that's our job as the media. I don't mean, right, okay, but bloggers especially, you know. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the problem is, especially on the Windows enthusiast side, that, um, you know, we're, I think we're feeling a little beaten down these days, and, yeah. we're, and we're, it's almost like we're looking for bad news, you know. So when he says that uh, Surface that will not dominate, the the volume of say you know won't be the volume uh, however you said it uh, will not dominate here's the, the volume. here's the quote this is to the yep. MIT Technology Review in an, in an environment in which there are 350 million PCs sold I don't think Surface is going to dominate volume but it's mm -hmm. a real business yep. I can parse that it means it's selling okay we're happy with it but we're we but OEMs continue to produce your Surface your uh, Windows 8 uh, uh, devices because there's plenty well, of room for us all. Yep. Uh, right. I don't know how many models. I mean, and that's models. what they've been saying. He's been saying this all along, Th right? That's the thing. That, and that's what I wrote my news story about this. I, this doesn't yeah. necessarily represent any, a, a change at all. Um, it's it's interesting anytime he opens his mouth, obviously. so. <laughs> well, uh, and they give you so little information about sales numbers that everybody's trying to parse whatever crumbs we can Well, what, what does dominate volume mean? I mean, uh, if HP has 117 different models of PCs right. and Dell has 112. Right. And Lenovo has, you know, their their number. Nothing there's could no, dominate. There's no one. There's, right. there's no one PC that dominates anything. And it's a real. Wise. But here's what a real business implies: that it's successful enough. We plan to continue it. We're happy with the. We're happy with the results. It's well, not. Well, it's not taking more to the point, though. It's not an experiment, right. and it, it's not what so many people had alleged, which was this is something Microsoft will go to uh, market with to show OEMs. It's not a reference show, design, right? How they can do it, yeah. and then once the Real PC makers figure it out. They'll exit the market. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, well, it's I think a what, real business. A real business means it's got a P and L. Right. Um, you know, we expect to make money making these things. We're not doing this to lose money every quarter. You know, not right. like Microsoft has any businesses like and that. And you're going to make more uh, of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, right. It's an ongoing concern. It's something you will update with new models. And yeah. Good. Because you don't want people buying them now thinking like this right. is abandonware. You know? Right. Right. I know, which is something of some Surface RT users are worried about. They're like, you know, there are a lot of new uh, window, uh, sorry, ARM-based uh, Windows RT PCs or tablets coming. Like, is this the end of the line? Like, is it going to be a one-off is this, is this a BlackBerry playbook? Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hear no, but um, I know I know a number of Surface what? RT users are worried that this was just like a fun little side project. And, yeah, and to, to play devil's advocate, as long as they're selling it, you're not going to hear Steve Ballmer say, yeah, yeah. We're, we're probably not going to make any more of those. That was of a course, flop. Yeah. <laughs> Although I will, I will say this on RT. I mean, um, obviously, there's a, a very healthy debate you could have about the future of RT and whether you think it has a future and all that. But um, the companies that elected to sit out RT, the first generation, you know, Samsung and HP and I think Dell, you know, whoever they were, are never coming back. They're, I, they're I, not I don't, making I, I, an RT. Yeah. No, I don't see that ever happen. You know what I mean? I and I, yeah. I, I, I think that's the one serious negative that is not a huge debate. You know that unless I mean something crazy happens, I don't see them ever reversing course in that. Those companies okay. uh, understand the PC market; they want to make PCs. That's their bread and butter. They're going to stick with that, and I think that's going to be the volume market for Windows. Regardless, and they can afford to say we're going to wait and see if the tablet market does. You know, are we in a post PC world? We don't know, but when when we when when that becomes clear, well, we can make an RT then. There's no urgency to do it now, right? This is, I mean, we don't have this in the notes, and in fact, we probably should have talked about HP a little bit because, um, you know, HP is now rumored to be making an Android tablet, and right. it is very interesting how Microsoft's relationship with the Andro uh, Android with uh, HP has changed because. Not that we know any internal details, 
But HP is the company that always followed Microsoft to market with whatever it was, right. the pocket PC, the weird media center stuff and the media center extenders and the, you know, the, the smart displays and the tablet PC. They were always first on board with everything, you know. During the Longhorn days, they used to do reference designs for hardware like the Athena PC. And they were always on board to be first with whatever Microsoft wanted to do. Them not doing Windows RT is the clearest message, I think, you, they could ever send that they are not that follower. You could say the die was cast Microsoft. when they bought WebOS, though. Fair and enough. said, but, we're I mean, getting out of yeah. the PC business. That might have been a little indicator. But when that, okay, but, you know, it's <laughs> HP is not a continuum because obviously right. they've had that different That was Leo Apotheker and now it's somebody else. Yeah, and, and, and WebOS crashed hard for them. Right. And you, you think that would be the perfect time for them to come running back to Microsoft. But, you know, um, we, we'll see. You know, right now it, they're rumored to be doing an Android device. They have a, a Chromebook coming, right. you know. This is not how HP of, you know, five, seven, ten years ago would have acted. Is there anybody that's like that anymore that says we're... Dell. We're, <laughs> Dell is, yeah. is, I guess it's Dell, although they make, yeah. and they're making a lot of hay about an Ubuntu laptop they're selling now. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, and they're selling it, you know, it used to be, they've always made Linux-based laptops, but you had to dig to find them now. It's no, I, like, I, I actually see Lenovo heading in that direction. Um they, they, they do sell Android devices, of course, and, and an Android phone in China. But honestly, I think it's just because Microsoft didn't have anything at the time. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Lenovo become that new favored partner yeah. of Microsoft's and have them be all Windows, uh, go, you know, as this stuff matures. I expect to see them come out with a uh, Windows phone, for example, and certainly they have Windows tablets. So they jumped, they did jump right on board with that stuff. And... I do think, though, that we're in a more heterogeneous world than we used to be. Uh, there are other choices, and it makes sense for any company, especially given that Microsoft's selling hardware. Yeah, to, Leo, to there are no other heads. choices, actually, and I, I refuse to even acknowledge that comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Windows or nothing. That is, no, 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 no. <laughs> they don't call it the super site for Windows for nothing. Right, right, right. It's not the super site for heterogeneous computing, Leo. <laughs> I would submit that that's good for consumers. Choice is good, and uh, I, you know, it's probably good for those companies too. Why should they uh, make only one kind of thing? Sure. I do like it, though. Actually, I take that back. Mm. And I never liked HP as, as uh, PCs because they had so much crapware. But I love Lenovo's, and I love the yeah. ThinkPad line. And I think if anybody, they're the, one, they're the guys. If they could they're get it the right. Guys. Get it right. Yeah, they're and, the guys. And maybe Vizio, as they come up uh, with some really nice looking hardware uh, and signature PCs, I don't know how well that business is doing for them, but um, they're the guys, not HP. I, 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 and I don't even care if HP is a Microsoft house. I know, I know. Well, it's, but it's just interesting. I mean, I, it, because this is, it's not like we've had some expose where, you know, the, the hidden emails between the CEOs are finally revealed. I mean, you can just see how it's changed. Yeah. You know, even externally, you can see how it's changed. Uh, HP do was they dove headfirst into Windows Home Server, right? Uh, when that came out, you know, so it's changed in that little amount of time. You know, whenever I, you could chart it from the second version of Windows Home Server, whatever year that came out a couple of years ago, that's when it started because that's the one where they were like, "No, we're not doing that." You know, that's that was it, that's when it started. And that was probably the same year as WebOS. In fact, it definitely was because the home server guys actually moved over to WebOS. It's just interesting. That's why, I, you know, we don't. It's not in the notes or anything. Something, not, to, something, know. to, something to observe <clears throat> and and watch. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. <clears throat> we did mention that Windows Live Messenger uh, now uh, the uh, the they're in, it's checking into the hospice. And, uh, <laughs> but no, no, this is that Monty Python movie. I'm not dead I'm not yet. Dead yet. <laughs> you know, you're dead. It's yeah, no, you're dead. Yeah, it's a yeah. dead Polly. Yeah, um, but they've changed the clock. It's what now? What? What is the? I just saw that email. I was just looking at. It. What did they say? April. April eighth is April the 8th. New start. And okay. originally it was supposed to be March fifteenth, but it seems like only one percent of all the um, existing users are going to be pushed over on that date and then april 8th everybody else will start being pushed now through the, through as, like april. as that pushed process word, pushed off the cliff pushed <laughs> it feels like off the cliff <clears throat> yeah it does <laughs> um yeah. all all issues of skype as a messenger or an im client aside i mean obviously it's not ideal 
What the hell? <laughs> That's a great way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I mean, uh, it seems to me we're, we've had more problems with Skype since Microsoft yeah. bought them than ever before. It's not getting to, it's not a better product than it was. Maybe it's even a worse product than it was. Well, I will say this. I think you're right. We can't actually blame Microsoft. Well, actually, I guess we can. <laughs> it, it's not well. In other words, it's not because Microsoft interfered with Skype and made it worse. No, they're not interfering with it at all. Skype, uh, Microsoft's like it, you know whatever. We spend billions on you. Do it. Go nuts. Fix it. Make it good. Release new versions for iOS and Android that have features Windows doesn't. Don't worry about it. Do whatever you want. Right. No, that's you guys are completely autonomous. I mean, yeah. it's, it's insane how Microsoft has handled Skype. And now, of course, they. I think we talked about last week. Probably. Oh, maybe we didn't. So Microsoft is, is uh, has put the link group into Skype. Yep. Which is potentially bad, but kind we, of like when they put the Windows Live group into Windows. You kind of saw that happen because Link is really uh, their their enterprise Skype. So, yeah, they they kind but of Link is awesome, Leo. See, and this is the, ah, why I'm worried about this because the problem. Link is unique in, at Microsoft in that it, it actually works really well, and it's um it's nice and it's simple, and uh, it has a nice UI, and uh, Skype is <clears throat> a disaster. It's <clears throat> like a uh, I, I just, I'm worried. So uh, the good news is the back end of Skype, which I think is the important bit, uh, the audio and video chatting stuff, you know, the service. The I back guess. end is always the important bit. <laughs> okay. Combined with the uh, front end of Skype, if you, uh, sorry, of Link, which is the part that they got right, really right, uh, is a good combination. And that's something that Microsoft's working toward as well. And for some reason, this is not in the notes. I guess... Um, uh, we moved. We moved Link down. We moved, we moved, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we should That's hold okay. off on this. Yeah, we could. We could talk about it now or not. It's up to you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Whatever you want. I didn't mean to steal oh, your thunder. I'll tell yeah, you what. No. While you guys debate, let me do an ad. <laughs> <laughs> you can figure it out. Work it out. I was out confused why yourself. it wasn't there. Okay, that makes sense. I see. I'm <laughs> sorry. Maybe that's the uh, warning we're getting. Is that you guys have decided different things? Can I talk about Ring Central? <laughs> Please do. Just briefly. I'll apologize to Mary Jo and Messenger. <laughs> <laughs> you have till April 8th. <laughs> Someone has to use it. <laughs> Actually, this is, this is kind of germane. We, Ring Central is our uh, business phone system that we use. It's a cloud-based system. It's the number one cloud-based system. It's fantastic. Um, you've heard me talk about it before. We had to install a, uh, a phone system in the, in the studio when we built it. Because uh, I was having people at the old place, at the cottage, everybody would just, you know, use your cell phone. And really... That's not very businesslike, uh, and and employees don't really like it. So we we got, but I didn't want to go to get a big PBX in the basement and all the ha hassles and the hairball that is. Um, Russell Tammany, our our consulting IT guy, I always I always give him praise for telling us about Ring Central, and we're really happy. No startup cost. There's no PBX. There's no hardware at all. It's all cloud based, but you do get the phones, and you can choose your own phones. We we chose Polycom phones, twenty dollars a month per user. Uh, actually, when you buy the phone now, they have a special deal just for uh, Windows Weekly listeners. When you buy a desk phone, you'll get a second phone free up to 20 phones total. So it's even more affordable. And you can try it with a 30-day risk-free trial. 800-543-9980. That's a special number just for Windows Weekly listeners. Or visit ringcentral.com. The promo code for this is TWIT. Um, Ring Central is... Everything you'd want. You could. They've, they've got apps, so you can run the Ring Central app, make phone calls from your cell phone that are billed to uh, the company and appear as the company number. They now have SMS messaging. This is really cool. You can do business text messaging from our number. Incoming messages to our number go to the person's phone as if it's a text message, except it's through Ring Central. Um, that is really great. Send text messages to not just to uh, colleagues, but to customers too from your business phone number. Ringcentral.com. Promo code is TWIT or visit 800, call 800 543 9980 for that 30 day trial and the free phone offer. That's 800 543 9980. Ringcentral.com. The Microsoft doesn't have a. Uh, phone system although oh, I, I think over time people <laughs> probably are going to move to VoIP and things like that for a long time it's these little things you know it's, uh, they don't have like an RSS reader I mean a, a service you know right. obviously there's some stuff that the third the th third party 
I almost said the third world could yeah. provide. Third world, yeah. Third, third world, world could provide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Link, though, has Although a you could voice. Say, I mean, right? Link, Link is basically their replacement for a PBX, right? I right. Mean, yep. That's right. Yep. Kind of what it is. So they're, they're in that business. Well, I start. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right, right. Now, what okay. happens to Link? Because Skype does not do that. Well, this uh, right. Maybe I, let's shut up and let Mary Jo talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, Mary Jo. Uh, it, it's it's funny because all these stories are so interwoven, right? right. Skype, Link, Messenger, right? right? So, um, what's what's happening is, like Paul said, they they moved the Link division under Skype, and so the, over time, what they're planning to do is actually enable Skype and Link to federate and connect. Believe it or not, they don't do that right now even though they're in the same division and they're owned by the same company. Um, originally, the idea was supposed to be when Microsoft came out with Link 2013, which it already has out and it RTM'd uh, last, last October. Um, the plan was they were going to have this federation and integration with Skype built in. That didn't happen for some reason. And uh, I don't think a lot of people noticed. I didn't. Um, so we just found out this week that Link Skype integration is going to be a two-step thing um, the instant messaging um, and the conferencing components are going to be federated starting around June of this year instead of now. And the video part isn't going to be happening until next year, like next summer, probably. So this is taking longer than they thought. They said it's more complex than they thought it was going to be. Uh, so, yeah, that's what that's what's happening to make those two platforms more interoperable. Okay. It's not so, horrible, but well, it's taking longer than people expected and wanted. It's like wanted. Ebola. It's eating, it's eating it from the <laughs> inside out. Yeah. yeah. Liquefying <laughs> its vital organs <laughs> in a two-step process. Uh, that's the definition of cloud computing. <laughs> uh, Got some Windows phone quickies for us, Mr. P? <laughs> yeah, um... The Portico update, that first update for Windows Phone 8 is heading out to HTC Windows Phone 8X handsets on Verizon this week. It went to AT&T phones and I want to say Summit. Was it Rogers in Canada perhaps? Uh, last month, I'm not positive about that. But I guess some other phones as well. So that's nice. It's happening, you know, slowly as things do around here. And then, um, I, you know, sort of like the bomber comments from uh, Technology Review, Bill Gates was quoted on CBS News as uh, criticizing what people took to be Windows Phone. I actually, he specifically said Microsoft's mobile strategy. And I think it was what he was really talking about was the strategy against the iPhone, you know, meaning from several years ago, especially. Um, yeah, because Bomber obviously. initially dismissed the iPhone and said it's too expensive. Nobody wants that. Well, OK, you know, by the way, so interesting. And, that you and bring laughed that out loud, I believe. So people play this as, as they would, you know, now and say, oh, look how out of date he was, you know, how clueless he was. People forget this. The iPhone debuted at 600 bucks. It was. It, it, was, it really was too expensive. Yeah. Apple dropped the price like 30 days later. Right. So at the moment that he said that, it, the iPhone was the most crazily expensive phone on the market. And Apple actually dropped the price, a, an unprecedented thing for Apple to do. So it, it's... A little unfair to look back on that and make fun of him for that because the iPhone was crazy expensive when it came out. I mean, again, people forget that. But um, Microsoft did not react quickly to it. But, by the way, no one did. So, you know, RIM obviously didn't. Um, Microsoft didn't. And um, I, I think that's what he was talking about. In other words, that Microsoft likes to think of itself as this leader. And obviously, they're not leading in the, in the smartphone market, the mobile market, whatever. Um, you could take mobile to mean everything from not just smartphones, but also d uh, devices as well. So they didn't they didn't lead in these markets. They don't lead in these markets. And I, I, that's what he was saying. So it's interesting because Bill Gates says it. Um, I, I don't think it was directed at Windows Phone. It's mobile strategy. It's just mobile strategy. That's, mobile that's how we said it. <clears throat> and we're all going to Barcelona next week. God, I wish we Are were all you? going to Barcelona. Oh, I, I wish we were too. Yeah, that'd be Mobile awesome. World <laughs> Congress in Barcelona every year. Paul was there last year. But yeah. will Nokia be there this year? Will Microsoft be there this year? Will what will we see? Samsung announced the Ativ last year at uh, MWC, right? I think so. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, Microsoft, I, you know what? I haven't heard a word about anything they're doing at MWC. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be there, uh, but Nokia is going to be there for sure, and they're having a press conference, uh, I think, on the first day. I wonder, uh, there's been rumors, I think, that they might announce another phone in the Lumia family. Um, some people think they might even show off a uh, Windows 8 tablet of some sort. Not a Windows RT one, though. I think a Windows 8 one. Ah. Um, huh. But I, I don't know for sure any, uh, about anything that Microsoft's doing. If, if anything, I would think they might talk about other, like if there's a next minor update coming to Windows Phone, uh, something like the follow-on to Portico, but not yet Windows Phone Blue. I don't think they'll talk about that yet. I, I wish they would, zero. though. Don't you? I, I mean, don't you wish they just kind of say, look, this is what the, the big year for Windows Phone. Here's what's happening. You know, maybe we have a you couple of updates. Oh. Microsoft's not even said the word blue. It's like a banned word like Metro at this Which point. Which is why like exactly them. why they should come out and just address it. You, know? <laughs> you ask them, will you guys comment on Windows Blue? They're like, we don't even know what you're talking about. What's okay, blue? Well, what is that? What is blue? Yeah. I don't know sure. that. Yeah. Yep. And by the way, if, if Nokia comes out with a Windows 8 tablet and not a Windows RT tablet, that's everything you need to know about Windows yeah, RT. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> right. I mean, seriously, <laughs> they make ARM devices. I yeah, mean, no, that's their this thing. is something they know and understand. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I don't what know. did I, I mean, buy? That's just the a Surface rumor. RT. That's a rumor still. Too. Remember what, you know, this was a different Nokia. It was basically a different company. Um, but when Windows 7 came out, they came out with a very expensive netbook, which everyone was really excited about because it was from them and they were known for having really high quality machines. And that thing was kind of a dud. I don't remember the name of it, but it was a big deal for like 10 seconds. Yeah. I don't remember it either. So, Mary Jo, if you want to just uh, go have a beer. Yeah, I think I'll just leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Paul no, no, and I hold have on a second. Some, this, a is, this is the year. I'm gonna, we're going to get an Xbox in Mary Jo's apartment this year. This is the year. Actually, you know, this PlayStation 4, as little as we know about it, and we do, they really <laughs> didn't tell us much at all, um, does sound like it will have a media strategy. I was surprised to hear and, in fact, confirm that the Netflix is the, the the PS3 is the number one hardware platform for Netflix. Yeah. Uh, that which surprised me. Is very interesting, yeah. I think because yep. it's got a Blu-ray in it that people do see that more as a yeah. living room entertainment unit at, than the Xbox. I think you're right. <clears throat> but So maybe I, we'll I, get her a PlayStation 4. <laughs> <laughs> Without knowing anything about the numbers, just looking at the world... I would sort of assume that Xbox was killing PlayStation. You know that. Yeah, uh, well, I would they're too. Actually, they're they're neck and neck. It's very close. I know. I know. It, it was uh, quite a surprise to see that. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think so that this I, PlayStation I, Four is a, a, a shot across the bow of Microsoft. It's very interesting that they did it now, and not at E3. They're giving Microsoft well, time yeah. to respond. Well, Microsoft's doing the same thing, by the way. They're going to have an early announcement as well. Are they? Yeah. The, the, the one thing that I find curious about the PlayStation 4 coverage is that a lot of people are saying, you know, how do you launch a, a console and not show the console, you know? And, and actually, I thought they did a very good job of addressing that, where they said, you know, in the past, we used to push the hardware. We used to talk about how this thing was a supercomputer on a chip, and that, that's what was important. And they're saying, you know, in today's world, the, the important stuff is the interconnectedness, you know, that you can have someone that you know watch you playing a video game or watch a recording of it later on any device, not just a video game, but a tablet, a computer, whatever, and the ability to do all these other things, that, that the center of this thing is not the device. It's, it's like you. It, it's you and the connections that you have. And then they went on to discuss virtually everything except what the thing looks like. And, you know, ultimately, I mean, who cares what it looks like? That's not even, it's not even, that's not important in the slightest. The, the PlayStation 3 has had uh, several hardware revisions. The current version looks nothing like, or almost nothing like the original PlayStation 3. Who cares what it looks like? You know, but it's weird how everyone is kind of focusing on that bit of it. Um, I think it's also very interesting that they're using x86 hardware because this is a very well understood quantity. And of course they're going, it's uh, kind of a unique eight core kind of AMD, you know, weird thing with AMD graphics and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's x86. I mean, that's, that's huge. Very well, very well understood. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and, and so it, no, they they and and uh, Steam was not there. Was kind of visible in their absence. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a partner that you know they had uh, 
added steam. Steam is going down crazy guy with a gun route. Like they're I just wonder. I Linux wonder. gaming and they're just <laughs> <laughs> well, gum, and, and, and would you that. rather have a Steam box or a PS4 that's x86 based that could play Windows games? It has Blizzard at least kind of dipping a toe in. Um, I think this is all. Uh, I think this is all challenging to Steam, and more so than yeah. Xbox, frankly. Well, we'll see, right? Because Xbox will do their own announcement. I, I have a feeling that when are they going to do that? X you said before E3, a couple of months. Oh, interesting. Um, I think that. Xbox and PlayStation 4 are going to be very similar. I, I think, agree. I think that's how this is going. And in some I ways, believe... Xbox is playing catch-up to Microsoft, to the social, certainly. Uh, oh, yeah. And the media stuff, especially. Media I mean, stuff, yeah. Uh, you know, ne now, Netflix Microsoft's got to... Somebody made this point. One of the reasons Netflix is yeah. not big on Xbox, so you have to pay for Xbox yeah. Gold. Well, the other it. reason is, on Xbox, you have a lot of choice. So... Uh, right, there's other stuff. You know, when you're in the PlayStation, it's kind of a barren right, environment right. for video. There's not a lot going on there. So, you know, Netflix is it. But I, I think it was Sony who said when Microsoft launched the Xbox 360, which they did, by the way, a year before right. Sony That's or Nintendo launched right. their then next right. generation consoles. They said, I believe it was Sony who said, the next generation begins when we say it does, not when Microsoft <laughs> enters the market. I, I, I think it was Sony that said That's that. pretty funny. Um, yeah. So hopefully Microsoft will have a, a take on that quote uh, when means they announce what I that. say it means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. It's not the next generation until we're there. You know? <laughs> now, the interesting thing is it looks pretty clear that we will have both a PlayStation 4 and a new generation Xbox this Christmas. So That's this is going to be a hell of a battleground this holiday season. Here's another thing to consider is that um, this console and presumably the Xbox console are, from a hardware perspective, completely incompatible with the previous generation. Right. Um, people have been talking about whether they could emulate, you know, the PS3 or whatever in this and, you know, maybe, but... Well, they'll use uh, Gaikai to stream. They even said to stream PS1, 2, and 3 games, but you won't okay. be able to run them. Won't be able to run them, Okay. And x86 makes sense because now you kind of have an easier development platform cross mm -hmm. not only Xbox I think and PlayStation, but a Windows. And so there's so developers yeah. are going to flock to these platforms. I think that was the dig against the PS3, too, was that right. the Too hard to develop. hardware was so well, uh, so mis you know, just people didn't understand it. And then the developer tools were uh, horrible. Right. It had a hard time getting up to speed. Um, that's one area where Microsoft has always done a really good job. Um, also, and Microsoft has done so well with independence, and XNA and the independent development has mm -hmm. been fantastic mm -hmm. on Xbox. And clearly, Sony said we got to do better there. And they have done some really interesting stuff, and I think more to more to come. It's it's a, you know what? It's all good news for a gamer, right? Yeah, the the few, the proud. You know, <laughs> I don't, I mean, it's kind of <laughs> unclear how many there are. I mean, it's it's tens of millions of people. You know, it's not it's not a billion people. It's not. No, it's uh, and true. That's, it's why not, they, that's a good point. That's why they have to get into the entertainment stuff. You know, right. it has to do more than just play these admittedly amazing looking video games. I mean, this stuff today on the PS3 and the Xbox 360, which are amazing. And then if you watch the uh, press conference ahead, some of the stuff on the PS4 Gorgeous. looks it's just beautiful. Other interesting uh, thing was Jonathan Blow, the guy who did Braid for Xbox. Mm-hmm. Kind of defecting, it looked like, over to the, uh, the uh, Sony side. Which one, which game was his? I don't even Braid. remember. Braid. Braid. No, which game on the... What oh, did you talk what about? the name of it was. Oh, I don't remember. It was pretty cool. I remember that but one. Was it, was it The Witness or something? Is yeah, something, like that? something like that. What, what was... was the chat room will know. What was Jonathan Blow's uh, game? Um, no, no, nobody so says Braid, we're exclusive to... Uh, it was The Witness. Okay. <laughs> it was The Witness. Yeah, yeah, okay. That makes sense based on what the graphics look yeah, like. Um, yeah. If you haven't seen it, he was one of the guys in that indie game uh, video, which is amazing. Right. Uh, it's a, I think it chronicles the three developers creating games for Xbox and the Netflix, various issues they I had. Think, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. Really, really good. So, uh, yeah, Witness is that kind of mist-like, pretty uh, interesting game. Very pretty. Kind of cartoony almost. Yeah, but, well, um, it almost looks like watercolor painting. It was just very yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just think it's good news for, uh, for all round. And I think we're going to see a battle. And I just want to let Sony and Microsoft know that we will welcome their ad dollars <laughs> as they vie to become the number one platform in the living room. Uh, we can help you. I didn't. I didn't. By the way, so I just uh, PlayStation Four. I mean, I'm not. I don't care about the PlayStation personally. I'm kind of an Xbox guy, obviously. But um, I didn't see anything there that I felt was out of bounds or ridiculous or cause for concern. I, I 
I thought what they did looked great. So we'll see. I mean, I Microsoft has got a lot to live up to now. So I'm yeah. very, very curious to see how Microsoft comes out of the gate. Sony must feel confident because you wouldn't you, you wouldn't be want to be the first if you didn't. If you feel confident that you could do it in Microsoft. Do you think now here's something I said yesterday. We we by the way, we had live coverage of the announcement. You could get it on our Twit Live specials at twit.tv. Uh, mm -hmm. with, which was great because we had Anthony Carboni from Revision 3 and Brian Brushwood, so two really serious mm -hmm. uh, gamers, and uh, Anthony's a real game journalist, um, as opposed to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm just a game. Uh, but, <laughs> but I just get uh, played. Uh, one of the things that I posited, and I wonder if you have a something to say about this, is that Microsoft's pretty busy right now with Surface and Windows 8, and Xbox may not be a high priority for them, even though it is the next generation. Do you think that they have enough bandwidth to... to yeah, I don't think it works that way. Okay. I, Xbox is its own thing. You know, we talked about how independent Skype is. Right. I, actually, the precedent for Skype like is Xbox. Okay. I mean, they're... Yeah. They got a team. They got all the people. It's not they're literally physically separated from everyone okay. else. They're... Right. they're comp yeah. They're so. the... They're the... You know, the rest of Microsoft probably can't stand those people because... It's not really a volume business, but it's like the coolest thing at Microsoft it's the cool by business, far. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so those guys are like gods. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's... They must annoy everyone. Yeah. The people in the office of Windows Teams must hate those people. Yet, yet to be proven that they're even making any money. Yeah, I can't get back to you. I'm busy playing video games. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll call you on Friday, maybe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It must be like. That. Um, anything else you want to say before we get to our picks and tip and, and all of that? I want to say <sighs> Rachel's idea of starting a Kickstarter to get me an Xbox is a no. No, do not start an Indiegogo, a Kickstarter. If you want to mail her an Xbox. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm, actually, can we mail you a new Skype machine? That would be a good start. Yeah, you guys are. You're, you're mailing me a new oh, Skype gosh, machine. Oh, gosh. Good. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, no, on the Xbox, you know, I think I'm the customer they need to convince. I'm actually, right. like, if you guys can convince me there that I would need and want a 720 in my 450-square-foot apartment, then you've won the market. <laughs> That's a whole square foot shot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what if we hung it outside like one of those air conditioner units? Yeah. Put it out the window. That's what it needs to do. It needs to be out Only the, the face of it. You know. <laughs> I'll avoid the red ring of death. <laughs> nice, keep it nice and cool out there. Yeah. We're uh, going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it, Paul? What's going to be the uh, wedge? Is it it's media? It's not going to be video games, it's right? Media. It's going to be the interconnectedness with the Microsoft right. services and it's going to be the entertainment stuff. Yeah. Do you, you know, I think that's going to be the big deal. Let's let, ask actually probably before we even get, you know, let's not put the cart before the horse. Do you have a television, Mary Jo? <laughs> she doesn't have a TV, Paul. Nope. This is a this is a bigger mountain than I thought. Do you have a transistor radio of some kind? Is there a, you a don't, flashlight? I have one of those hand crank radios. He doesn't know. have a TV. You have one of those etonics in case of emergency of those, like, radios. Those things that like mountain climbers bring up, where they tack the the you know the sheet to the side of the mountain and they sleep in it. Is that how you sleep? What is yeah, that? Yeah, I do. I have one of those hammocks. Do you have a Murphy a Murphy bed that comes from the down from the no wall? no Murphy? Where do you put the beer? Yeah, that's the that's the priority. See, like you have to have priorities. <laughs> She's got 450 square feet, 800 square feet of beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> How many vertical feet do you have? <laughs> I, actually, my ceilings are really high in here, so yeah, if see? you could suspend something from the ceiling, We're it might work. Volume, yeah. not you know, not square right. footage, yeah. not area. Uh, Mary Jo is dedicated to her work, says Matt Castle. <laughs> nah, you know, I, it's just, I, I don't see that much on TV that I can't no. look at on a computer if you're, I want to see not, it. You ain't missing anything. Not uh, missing I think anything. anybody intelligent does not have a TV, as Paul and I will vouch for. The time we have spent <laughs> wasting in front of the TV, <laughs> in front of the video game, that we would be the next Da Vinci if we didn't sink so much of our genius, our power, our wit, our intuition. I, you know what? If I knew humanity. who that or what that was, I might agree with that statement. But. <laughs> Is that the hit new CBS series, yeah, Leo? It's Da Vinci. It's, it's CSI on Da Elemental. Vinci. You're going to love it. <laughs> yeah. It's a painter who solves crimes during the Renaissance <laughs> using early CSI type techniques. You know it's coming. That's a hit. I got to write that down. I, you know it's coming. 
a a, a medieval procedural. Maybe he has visions and he paints like what the crime scene looked like. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I like it. I like it. Keep working on along those lines. <laughs> CSI Da Vinci. There is a new series about Da Vinci. <laughs> CSI Da Vinci. CSI, CSI <laughs> Renaissance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Ancient Victims Unit. All right. Uh, we are going to take a break, and then we will come back, and we will have a pick. We don't have an audible. I'm sorry, Paul. That's okay. Save your audible book for next time. But uh, we, we will have a, a tip and a pick of the week and a code name and a beer, which I, I, I can't wait to try. I don't even drink beer, and I'm you're making me want beer. <laughs> good. That's good. That is a really normal need. <laughs> I drank nothing but Dos Equis this week. Believe me, I oh, wanted beer, you know, too. You need better beer. Dos Equis isn't bad. You can tell when you're in a warm place because the beer is basically just water. Yeah. You know, it's refreshing. It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah. At least it was a warm place. Our show today brought to you by Carbonite.com. It's backup done right. If you're going to back up, there's a few things you really want, you really need. You need it to be automatic so you don't have to think about it. You should have it continuous, like always, so if you update a file, it automatically gets backed up immediately. Sync, you know. And here's the thing, off-site. Off-site. And, and, and might as well throw in affordable. Carbonite's all of the above. $59 a year for everything on your computer. It's automatic. It's continuous. Backs it up to their servers. You can encrypt it, so you have trust no one, privacy. It uses SSL, so it doesn't matter if you're using it in an open access spot or at home. It's going to be completely safe and secure. And it's uh, cloud storage. You can access your Carbonite files anytime. You don't have to wait for a disaster. Just log on to your Carbonite account on any computer, Mac or PC, or from the smartphone and tablet apps they offer for free. And there's your stuff. Unlimited backup for your PC or Mac, $59 a year. Try it free. Go to Carbonite.com and use our offer code WINDOWS, and you get the free trial for two weeks. You don't need a credit card. If you decide to buy, you'll get two months free, 14 months for the price of 12, just because you use the offer code Windows. Our way of saying thank you for letting Carbonite know where you heard about it. Carbonite.com. you got to back it up to get it back, so do it right with Carbonite. Paul Therott, your tip of the week. What is my tip of the week? Well, I, I have, have two tips. I could read it to you. <laughs> yeah, would you? Um, <clears throat> the first one is that uh, Microsoft is working on a series of videos, which I've gotten a, a preview called, uh, actually, they're not called Office Garage, but I think of them as Office Garage. But basically, <laughs> every every Wednesday through at least June and possibly into the future, they're going to release a video into IT pros that will teach them what they need to know about managing, deploying, maintaining Office 2013. And part of the reason is that I think there's a lot of misconceptions about Office 2013. People think that it's something that maybe doesn't run locally on your computer. It doesn't have the same capabilities as previous versions for IT pros and so forth. And uh, that's not the case. So some cool stuff I like coming this. on that front. Yeah, it's, I, it's really cool. This is uh, something we've seen more and more, which is brands doing their own media. And it's smart. Yeah. It's just smart. And it, they're really well done. It, it just looks really great. And they are actually in a garage. Well, they're Literally in a garage. No, it's, it's a garage. It's, it's a garage in, in Microsoft. the Microsoft offices. So they've, put, they've taken over some offices, put a garage door in. There's a garage door. <laughs> and then they're yep. jumping out of airplanes. So what's, they what, are. what could go wrong? Yeah, they do an awesome thing where they, uh, <laughs> they have the guy can't deploy a shoot until they've um, installed Office That's over, the, over the Internet. They got a you know, they jib. This is pro, man. This is pro. Yeah, it's good. Very nice. And, and that is uh, where should I go to get that? Uh, it is, my, I believe it's Microsoft.com slash garage, and it's going to start on Wednesday the 27th. So this isn't uh, from, what do they, I want to call it Plan 9. This isn't... Uh, <laughs> Channel 9. Channel 9. <laughs> Which is nothing like Plan 9. <laughs> right. Completely different. Um, this is its own, because it's the IT Pro blog, so they just, they give yep. them some resources. Yep. Yeah, it's said, its own thing. Yep. Make a video, you guys. <clears throat> cool. Tip two. Good guys. Yeah. Uh, the second tip is just uh, another quickie. I, last summer when Outlook.com was in preview mode, I wrote a series of tips about switching to Outlook.com. And now that it's not in preview, I don't know what's changed exactly, but I went back and looked at them and I collected them all and just did a single article with the, you know, I put the woman with the knife in there. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the woman from what's, uh, Meg, um, 
can't think of the actress's name. The woman from uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Oh, uh, Meg, Meg Ryan, yeah. yeah. Meg Ryan, doesn't it? The, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll uh, chop anyway. what she's chopping. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got her Surface Pro there. And um, it's and it's a just knife. a collection of collection yeah. of the tips that I wrote previously. Cool. So. I have to read this. This is great. Right. You know, so when you're switching from Gmail or whatever. Yeah. WinSuperSite.com, of course. Yes. And in also in the Wayback Machine uh, sense, the software pick this week is Angry Bird Seasons on Windows Phone 8. If you have any other kind of smartphone, you probably played this about two years ago. But <laughs> it's available now on Windows Phone 8. It's only eight, It's only 99 cents, rather. This is worth um, it because they update it for every holiday, so you always get it. And it is a, it's a great. It yeah. is a great game, obviously. It's but, worth 99 cents. And it's Windows 8, Windows Phone 8 specific, oh. which what I thought was mean? kind of interesting. Like you can't uh, run I, it on, uh, on 7, 7, 5? I, yeah, unless there's a version. I don't know if this is the only one that came up for me because that's what I'm using, but you know, for it's, a, this version is literally for Windows Phone. It's kind of annoying that it's sideways, though. Can, can they get a... Uh, get a <laughs> Microsoft doesn't know how the web works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the screenshots it's unbelievable. are sideways. Yeah, you wonder. You know, people wonder why I'm a crazy person. And it's the little things. These things add up, Leo. I'm telling you, it, it's like a little, it's just a little chip out of my soul every time something like this happens. You just, it's not, you know, Paul, you just turn your head and, no, I can't, I mean, and it's completely... Turn my head, what, cough? What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> oh, just, I got you. Turn your so. head sideways and, the, and they look yep. fine. It's kind of hard on the neck, though. This is what it's like covering Microsoft. Yep. That is a little strange. It's unbelievable. Really. <laughs> Our Enterprise Pick of the Week, Mary Jo Foley. Yes, uh, my Enterprise Pick of the Week it was is partially Link 2013 that we already talked about. Okay. But uh, a bigger piece of this Maybe is Maybe we could start Office. using that with you. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> though, the, the awesome? video, yeah, not it won't be till next June, though. Oh. Like, and I mean yeah. next, like 2014. Yeah. Oh. Right, 2014 yeah. for the video part, syncing up. Yeah. If you want to sync Skype and Link, that is. Oh, wow. Uh, but the bigger, the bigger picture thing here is on February 27th, next week, Microsoft's going to be launching the other part of its new office, which is the Office 365 Business SKUs. So they've already announced and launched Office 2013 and Office 365 Home Premium. But the part that a lot of IT pros care about are the business SKUs. So Office 365 Small Business, Small Business Premium, the Pro Plus, um, the mid-sized business and the enterprise. All of those are going to be launched on February 27th. Microsoft's having a virtual webcast to launch them. No big event or anything. Uh, but this, this is when they're really going to start pushing out the new Office bits to business users. Uh, some, some of the enterprise users already have been getting the refreshed uh, Exchange Online, Link Online, and SharePoint Online. But most ordinary people are going to not start getting this until February 27th or sometime afterwards. So next week is really the, the big part of the Office 365 launch, and that's why it's the Enterprise Pick of the Week. I'm sorry, I was having a beer. <laughs> 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 you got me in the mood. <laughs> nice. Codename Pick of the Week. I like this one. Yeah, I, I didn't know the code name of this. Um, Big Splash is the code name pick of the week. Uh, Big Splash is the code name for Xamarin 2.0, uh, which launched this week. Now, Xamarin uh, sounds like some strange medication. <laughs> no. <laughs> Xamarin is the the guys, Miguel Diaz Casa and uh, Nat Friedman. That's why. Uh, yes, who... who uh, did the original work around Mono um, and right. Mono Develop. And this week they launched their latest uh, suite of tools for if people who want to develop in C Sharp. Mono is Zam the disease, Xamarin is the cure, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Yeah, so big the big splash part of this, my guess, is what they announced this week that was kind of a wow was they're, they're letting people use Visual Studio to develop C Sharp applications for iOS. Whoa. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a big deal, Whoa. right? <laughs> I don't know if Apple is going to let them do it. Wow. And I don't think they can stop them. They used they to have a clause in there that you couldn't use other person's tools, but they I think they eliminated it. The developers yeah, were so and, angry about that. Though. Yeah, and Microsoft used to have a clause saying you could not extend Visual Studio to work on other platforms or with other platforms, but they did away with that a few years ago. So the Xamarin guys have, have created a plug-in 
so that if you want to use Visual Studio and develop a C Sharp app that'll run on iOS, Android, Windows, um, it's it's pretty cool because if you if you want to be a mobile developer and actually have your code more translatable and work work across all the different platforms, you might want to seek out the new Xamarin stuff. Cool. And finally, let's get a beer. Let's get a beer. I was trying to think of a good beer for the episode 300 of Windows Weekly. So I came up with the single cut beer smiths. They have something called Eric, more cowbell. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a milk stout. Um, and that's the cowbell reference. Um, single cuts of beer in Queen, a beer brewer in Queens, brand new. Uh, in Queens, New York. And the reference obviously is Eric and the Cowbell in that Saturday Night Live right. skit. I've got a fever. Yep. The, fever has one <laughs> the Blue Oyster Cult, yep. Eric. You know. yep. <laughs> what we need in here is more Cowbell. More Cowbell. More Cowbell, yep. Now, so for what Windows is, Weekly, is there milk cowbell. involved in a, in a milk stout, actual milk? No, there's actually uh, milk sugars that you add towards oh. the end of the brewing process. Practice. So it gives it a very milky taste and mm. feel, very creamy and smooth. Huh. And I, the head is creamier. And, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. More cowbell. <laughs> Singlecutbeer.com. Please drink responsibly. <laughs> Compute but responsibly. Drink. But do consume mass <laughs> quantities. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. You know, no point in sitting anybody. We have, we have the audience just arrived, but we're just ending Windows Weekly. So y you guys, you may want to just... Go in the other well, room. Well, let's recap I'm... quickly. So okay. this Chromebook thing. <laughs> let's about. recap. Let's recap. Let's start <laughs> over right from the beginning. Chromebook, <laughs> Pixel, yay or nay, too expensive. Then we talked a little bit about uh, Windows Blue. Here it comes. Milestone 1, Surface Pro. Okay. We've been Skyped. Windows Phone. Skypeled. PlayStation 4. Picks, Skypled. tips, code names, and beer. Thank you very much, everybody. Wow, what, what did we just spend like two hours on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I wore a hat. And, oh, and Paul wore a hat. This would be, if you had listened to the audio of the show, it would be worth just downloading the first few minutes of the video so you could see Paul's massive hat. Not really into headwear. <laughs> I have a hat collection. I do love hats for some reason. So if you want to send me your giant, well, that's your daughter's. You can't give it up. I, she has already taken it. Oh, she went and came and got it? Yeah. Dad, I told you to stop wearing my hats on podcasts. <laughs> Please. That's I get a lot, of, a lot of comments like that from her, actually. She's almost a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. It's only going to get worse. Paul Therott writes the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com, when his children let him. And Call of Duty allows. <laughs> You could uh, you could visit that or buy any of his great books. He's got a lot of them: Windows Seven Secrets, uh, Windows Phone Secrets, and he's working on the new Windows Eight book online. At what is it? Windows Eight the book. Windows Phone. Windows Phone book. It's not Windows Eight. It's Windows Phone. Windows Phone the book. <coughs> he already did yeah. Windows Eight Secrets. That's out. Right. Windows Phone the book dot com. Windows Phone book. Windows Phone book dot com. All right. So if you you've also actually, an Xbox Music book. Oh really. Small book, a little booklet, ah. <laughs> a pamphlet, one might say. It's okay. It's just an e-book. It's a brochure. A brochure. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley writes all about Microsoft for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com and makes beer in her spare time. In her tiny no little for me. Just beer. walk up flat. <laughs> now they have an elevator. You couldn't get all the stout up there. Exactly. Yeah. We do this show 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays. That's 1900 UTC on twit.tv. Do watch live. We'd love it if you're here. The chat room is always, uh, you know, a big part of the show. Uh, but if you can't watch live, <clears throat> Cadman says, the problem with your hat, Paul, is you can see the pixels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you can't watch live, we can make audio and video versions available to you. And yes, indeed, we will at twit.tv slash www or wherever finer internet programming is made available. Paul, Mary Jo, thank you. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly.
You know, this Chromebook doesn't actually look uh, that beautiful. It's very boxy. I know, it's boxy. For yeah. that price? It looks, it's boxier than the first power book. Uh, sorry. The fir the um, Lenovo. Titanium like power book. It looks like a... You know, from yeah, years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it it's looks like an old ThinkPad. Yeah, it's... Oh, uh, Google, yeah. Google, Google. It is not a pretty machine. Oh, my. <sighs> I give him a little credit for being so weird, but this is ludicrous. <laughs> Keeping this is it ludicrous. weird. It's, it's, ludicrous. it's more expensive than an Air. You get more, <laughs> less for yeah, you more. Get, you get way less storage. Way less so, for more. So you got that going for you. What the hell's the point here? I have no idea. That's kind of bizarre. It is more than kind of bizarre. What is really boxy? Really ugly? It doesn't. This looks like a prototype. It doesn't even look like they they I know. finished yeah. it. 